Hello, and welcome to FIFA Football Dish Out. I'm your host, Neil Shah, and here with me, we have expert sports presenter, RK. How are you doing? Very good. Good to be here. Good. So it's been a very exciting, almost exhausting, a lot of late nights, a week of FIFA World Cup football that we've all been watching. We've had 17 matches and 42 goals. It's been exciting. You look back at the last week of football, what comes up for you? What were some of the, the shocks, the, the interesting stories? What can you share? Yeah, a couple of things that really stand out. One is uh, uh, Russia doing so very well. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, when they came into the tournament, not too many expected them to uh, score as many goals. Traditionally, you don't see or you don't uh, kind of uh, imagine Russia scoring the number of goals that they do. But on the opening now, night, they scored five against Saudi Arabia. They won their second game as well against Egypt and they are pretty much through to the next stage of the competition. So that's that's lovely. That's well done to the host. So Russia mm -hmm. was, was wonderful to watch. Uh, in terms of the games, I thought uh, Portugal up against Spain was an absolute cracker. You've got all the superstars there uh, fighting. Uh, you know, it was brilliant. Three, uh, what, six goals in all was just brilliant. You had uh, a Ronaldo free kick there. You had a De Gea error. I mean, you never thought you were going to ever say that uh, after having seen what he has done for Manchester United over the past few seasons. And then, of course, uh, Germany, the defending champions, losing out to Mexico, uh, not necessarily because of how they played, but also more because of how Mexico were able to exploit the chinks in the armor of the world champions. So, yeah, I mean, these three things really were standouts for me over the past mm. week or 10 days. What about Brazil? Brazil, a pretty interesting draw, 1-1 against Switzerland. Um, this is a Brazil team that might have lost 7-1 at home just four years earlier, but all of a sudden come back. Very strong team, uh, superstars across that lineup. And then in the first match of the, season, or the, the tournament, just aren't able to uh, to get by with three points with Switzerland. What do you think happened there? It was I know I know it could be termed as a cliche, but I I seriously thought it was a game of two uh, completely different halves. I thought Brazil did play all right in the first half. They looked good, and the Coutinho goal was absolute magic. It also told you that uh, the coach was not only concentrating on Neymar. The team wasn't or isn't built only around Neymar, mm -hmm. but you've allowed Coutinho to come and play a very very pivotal role in um, in uh, going forward. Right? I mean, there were times when. Um, you know, Coutinho was happy to pick the ball up literally from the defence and go forward, which I thought was absolutely fabulous. And you look at the positioning of Paulinho, he's a completely different player now. Where he starts and where he ends, he takes a couple of shots at goal. We've seen him do that in uh, China before. We, therefore, he moved to Barcelona. Now to see what he's doing uh, in the heart of midfield for... Uh, uh, Brazil is outstanding. Firmino doesn't even get a start. I mean, he was, he was one of the standard performers for uh, uh, Liverpool. But of course, he came on as a substitute. So I think for all Brazilian fans, I know they'll be upset with the fact that they did not get all three points. But it was not all gloom because at the end of the day, you're playing against a Swiss side, which is extremely organized. They've been to major tournaments. They're good as far as the rankings are concerned. They've got a few experienced players themselves in Switzerland. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be worried if I'm a Brazilian fan. Ideally, would want to see them go and finish the job and do really well but that first half had enough and more to convince that brazil can do the job uh, with respect to neymar mm -hmm. suffered as many as uh, 10 fouls mm -hmm. uh, the most since an alan shearer has, has suffered in a solitary game but look i mean neymar is coming at the back of an injury he did missed uh, quite a few games for paris saint germain this time around and again probably how much of uh, you know, Messi and Ronaldo and everybody playing this World Cup is playing on his mind because he's obviously there with the very best. But the fact that he moved away from Barcelona was also, in certain quarters, him wanting to move away from the shadows of a Lionel Messi. So is he wanting to go that extra mile to prove that, look, I am the boss here. Look at me instead of looking at Messi and Ronaldo. You never know. At that level, it's about those... Yeah. Small little things that can really play its part. So Brazil, I wouldn't be too dis uh, uh, dissatisfied mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, yeah, I mean the first half was good. Ideally, three points, yes, but they got away with a point there. Got it. And you, you've mentioned Messi a few times there, and uh, you know Messi in a match against Iceland, um, you know, 2016 Euros quarter finalist Iceland, and a team that I love, and you'll probably hear that a lot more. And I'm, many, many other people have started to love this uh, country of just uh, three lakh people. But, you know, in that match, uh, Messi had, I think, seven shots. Seven shots, and one of them being um, a penalty that he missed, and uh, many others as well, and they end up drawing. 
What do you think uh, happened to Argentina that day? Do you think they're going to turn it around as well? Look, I mean, if, if that penalty had been taken, I mean, if, if, if he had scored off that penalty, uh, we could be sitting here and talking about uh, Messi scoring and then Messi leading probably. As you said, I mean, he had as many as seven shots on, on target for uh, Argentina. You know, uh, my mind goes back in time to the 2014 FIFA World Cup when there was this game against Iran. Carlos Quiroz's side were absolutely spot on with their ta tactic with respect to Lionel Messi. Messi, I mean, he literally uh, wasn't able to get off uh, a shot on target up until the dying moments when a moment of Messi magic really put pay to Iran's hopes from that particular World Cup. And there was a penalty which possibly have gone in favour of uh, Iran. But that didn't happen. But that's for another day. But I think, uh, you know, in, in terms of that, uh, this game was far better for a Lionel Messi. Right? But having said that, I think uh, the way Iceland equalized mm -hmm. soon after that brilliant moment from um, Kun Aguero, I mean, it was just a majestic uh, turn and an even better strike. We've seen that so many times, uh, Aguero doing it for Manchester City. But the, 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 uh, I mean, the pace at which they retaliated and they kind of equalized Iceland is something that could bother the Argentine supporters. Mm -hmm. The midfield, is it able to offer enough and more support to Messi and Aguero is something that uh, the fans and the coach will have to answer. Uh, the defence, somebody like Marcus Rojo is not exactly the same player, he's not the swiftest, he's not as quick as he was probably in the last edition of the FIFA World Cup. So, and it's, it's not the youngest of defences anymore. And also the goalkeeper, it's not your number one. Romero has gotten injured, therefore mm -hmm. you're playing Caballero. Mm -hmm. So there are issues at the back. You can turn around and say, I mean, could an Icardi have played up front? Uh, you know, is, is Di Maria the same player that he was at certain point in time? Could uh, Iguain have played a more part in that game? I mean, these are questions that you can keep going back to. But again, at, at, at the end of it all, uh, you know, Iceland is a good team. As you said, I mean, there are so many fans and then they're extremely organized setup. If they're going to stay behind the ball, it's going to be very difficult to break down that uh, Icelandish uh, midfield or a defense. So it, it was a good team that Argentina at the end of the day played against. Fantastic. So we've talked about Russia, uh, the home team that's uh, already booked their way into the second round. We've talked about Germany and Brazil and Argentina. Teams that just didn't get the results that uh, anybody expected, but um, it just made this World Cup that much more exciting. So we'll leave it at that for now, RK. And um, you guys stay with us. Keep watching Sports Kita for more FIFA football dish out.